Accounting Equation and Excel. Credit Memo, Refund Form, and Bad Debt Expense. Get ready and some coffee because we're learning the accounting foundation. The accounting equation in Excel. Here we are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay because we basically built this from a blank worksheet but started in a prior presentation. So if you want to build this entire worksheet from a blank sheet, you may want to begin back there or just construct your own worksheet as we go or possibly just use good old paper and pencil following along. If you do... First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our CPA six-pack shirts. A must-have for any pool or beach time. Mixing money with muscle. Always sure to attract attention. Yeah, even if you're not a CPA, you need this shirt. So you can like pull in that iconic CPA six-pack stomach muscle vibe, man. You know, that CPA six-pack everyone envisions in their mind when they think CPA. Yeah, as a CPA, I actually and unusually don't have tremendous abs. However, I was blessed with a whole lot of belly hair. Yeah, allowing me to sculpt the hair into a nice CPA six-pack-like shape which is highly attractive. Yeah, may maybe the shirt will help you generate some belly hair too. And if it does, make sure to let me know. Maybe I'll try wearing it on my head. A and yes, I know six pack isn't spelled right, but three letters is more efficient than four. So I trimmed it down a bit, okay? It's an improvement. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. You have access to this workbook though. There's currently three tabs down below. Example, practice blank. Example, in essence, the answer key. Practice tab having pre-formatted cells so you can practice the practice problem with less Excel formatting. The blank tab is where we started with a blank worksheet but are now basically continuing with a template template adding to that template however as needed as we work through the practice problem let's go to the example tab to get an idea of what we will be doing looking at the dreaded credit memo type of situation the credit memo is often a scary thing to be recording for multiple different reasons one is that it's not or hopefully is not a normal type of transaction because it usually occurs when we need to reverse in essence a sale that has happened in the past instead of deleting the sale that has happened in the past which would eliminate the audit trail we're going to be adding a credit memo which in essence reverses the transaction that has had happened in the past because it doesn't happen that often then we, we might not have as much experience entering the credit memo. It also often requires some kind of approval if you're in like a store situation in order for an, a credit memo to be entered, say, into the system, for example. And the transaction of the credit memo kind of goes against some of the general rules we have related to the income statement, which is that the income statement accounts, income and expenses typically only go one way, that the income goes up in the income direction and the expenses always go up typically which brings down the equity with the credit memo we basically reverse those rules also we have a problem with the accounts receivable so we're dealing with accounts receivable remembering that if we have accounts receivable then we also have to track a sub ledger tracking who owes us the money so if I have a reversal to an accounts receivable account, I also have to deal with that dang sub ledger, which is an issue. And I want to be able to tie out this credit memo in an accounting system to the invoice that is, is in essence reversing, giving us the audit trail accounting software often being useful for that kind of situation. Now, if there was a return of inventory, we also have inventory that we have to deal with. And the question is, is that inventory still good? Do I need to put it back on the books as inventory or is it basically written off and we're, and we're not gonna get the inventory back, right? So we have that kind of situation. Then you have things that are similar to a credit memo. Let's say someone returned the inventory, for example, and 
they had already paid for it. They bought it at a cash register. Well, in that case, you're going to have to give them a payment back. So it might not be a, a credit memo. It would be a return payment of some kind of form, way, shape, or form because you've already got the money. And if you want to return it, you're going to have to give them the money back or give them something else in return, such as basically a credit to purchase something else in the store or something like that, which again, gets a little bit more messy uh, of a transaction. All right, so keeping those things in mind, we're gonna go back to the blank tab here and let's say that we start off with just a sale on account. So we're gonna imagine that we make a sale and accounts receivable is gonna go up. And then of course, we're gonna to have to reverse that sale. Remembering that in a book, you might call that sale on account. That's what an accounting textbook might say. In practice, we would be data inputting into a form. That's the form that we enter the data into within our accounting software, which is usually called an invoice. So we're gonna say that's gonna be 1,600. Accounts receivable is gonna go up. I'm gonna do this fairly quickly because we've seen it before. Accounts receivable goes up. The other side's going to revenue. I'm not going to deal with inventory this time. We'll take a look at inventory more closely later, adding that level of complexity after we do the baseline example. So we're going to be picking up the 1,600. Let's put uh, our over here in our sub ledger. I'm going to say this is customer A again, tracking who owes us the money this time in the sub ledger by customer, which we need to do with the accrual account of accounts receivable because we're not on a cash basis if we have accounts receivable plus the last balance plus the sum of these so the sub ledger is at 1600 which should tie out to what is in our general ledger or our main account 1600 i'm putting zeros across the board as has been our custom so we'll just put the zeros on across the board and then let's put the balance, balance. We're gonna sum it up. Little darling equals the sum, sum it up. And we will copy that. And I'm just gonna paste that across formulas only so we don't mess up our beautiful worksheet. And so we'll just paste that across just the form you lie, just the form you lie. That's not how you say formula, but it sounds cool. The form you lie. All right. So then uh, I'm, let's copy this down. So on the accounting equation, we have an increase of accounts receivable, 1,600, which is an asset. Nothing happened to the liabilities. The equity went up by 1,600. Let's put an underline under these transactions so that we see the information nice and neat. All right. So then we're going to say on 320 credit memo happened credit memo now if we didn't sell inventory they didn't have to return the inventory or something possibly they said hey look your service was bad or something and we're like whatever dude our service was good what are you talking about but then they're going to complain and they want to sue us or something and we don't want to deal with the legal issue we're just going to give them a credit memo now because they haven't yet paid us they owe us in the accounts receivable so we're just going to say well the accounts receivable i'm just going to take the accounts receivable down and that's all we have to do so the credit memo would be the data input form for us to remove the accounts receivable by the way it being called a credit memo because in debit and credit format we would debit the asset account to increase it and now we are crediting their account that terminology gets all mixed up because people start to think of credits like differently than debits and credits like it has its own meaning when we say we're crediting the customer account, it, it's like good, you know, but it's really, we're, we're to us, it's an asset, we're crediting their account, meaning we're decreasing the asset from a debit and credit standpoint. So, so I'm gonna say that accounts receivable is gonna go down. Now the other side of the transaction is where it gets a little messy because now we're over here. What happened, the sales didn't really happen because we're not gonna get paid. We're never gonna get paid. Now, I'm gonna record it this time to the sales, but that means that sales is going down. Normally, we don't like that, right? So if you just enter a credit memo normally, which just reverses the transaction, it does give a nice audit trail showing us the entry and then the reversal, as opposed to deleting the transaction, which is not what you wanna do typically in accounting software, because you won't have an audit trail, but 
it's decrease in a sales account, which normally we don't like. So I'll show you what that looks like. And then next time we'll enter one and put the other side to another account, like bad debt possibly, or sales returns and allowances. So what's gonna happen, we could say sales goes down, negating the sale, and then the subledger is gonna go down. So A no longer owes us the money, even though they didn't pay us because they threatened to sue us. And we're like, all right, just bugger off if you would. We don't wanna do business with you anymore anyways, because you're, you're just messing with us. This, just a troll. We don't do plus the sum. So we'll just give them this money back and we'll go our separate way and uh, move on, move on. Get better clients, man get better clients. Let's put some zeros across the board. All right, zeros across the board. Boom, boom, boom. And then we'll put a balance down here. The balance, dude, is that. Let's add this up. So we'll just sum it up. Equals the sum, boom. And then I'm gonna copy that and copy that across the board. Pasting it just the values only just the values only i mean sorry the formulas only not the values the formulae okay so now sales went back down so again that's a little odd we might want to put it to another account like bad debt expense or possibly sales returns and allowances so that's where the little twist will happen so let's put that twist in let's do another one but then add a twist into our routine so we'll start with another sale. Let's just say this happened on uh, 425, let's say another sale on account. So another invoice, we're gonna say, let's just make this one 2000 for example purposes. But before I do that, I'm gonna copy this down. Let's copy this down. It reverses this transaction. So we're back to basically where we started. So this went up da -da, and then do back down and we're back to where uh, we started, boom, and boom. Put some underlines here. All right, okay, because I was getting ahead of myself. I don't wanna do that. I wanna not get ahead of myself. All right, so now let's go, now we're ready. So now we're gonna go accounts receivables going up by 2000 again, and over here, sales is going up again by the 2000, same O, same O. And this time, let's say it was customer B and the sub ledger that we have to track who owes us the money. Hopefully this, this guy's gonna pay us, hopefully. We got better clients this time, but no, this guy's a deadbeat too. We'll see, watch, watch, he's not gonna pay us. I know it, I know it, man. We shouldn't be dealing with this dude, but whatever. Plus the sum of these two. So 2000, that should match the, the, the ledger over here. Let's put zeros across the board zeros across the board and boom 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 okay okay and then we'll put the sum balance and then the sum equals the sum of the 20 and the zero we're going to copy that across the board ar is going up so there's the increase there we're just pasting it across the board Pasting it across the board. Okay. And then we'll copy down our totals. So the 50,000 is going up on the assets by the 2,000 in accounts receivable, no impact on the liabilities. The equity is going up by the revenue for the invoice of the 2,000. And then, and then we're like, that's good. We've, now we've got to picked up a new client, but then they're not going to pay us. We hear they're not going to pay us. We're like, dude, Dude, not again. So we're gonna have to write off AR. Man, who we, what kind of people we, AR uncollectible, uncollectible. Like why are we, we need to have better, a better like vetting process with these people, man. We gotta do some credit checks or something. This is not, sustainable what are we this is like this is like a the government doing business or something it's ridiculous all right so then we're gonna say but whatever we'll write it off so now accounts receivable is gonna go down again 
But this time I don't want to decrease the sales account. I want to make another account. Now, if account now oftentimes what will happen if if we're writing off like the bad debt, we might have determined that they're not going to pay us. Maybe they told us, maybe they we know that they moved out of the country or something and like, okay, we're not going to get any payment, but or it's just been a long period of time and we write it off. Now, when we write it off this way to bad debt expense, there's two methods that you might use. Larger companies will use the more proper method, or if you have a lot of accounts receivable, of an allowance method, which deals with an estimate of the receivables that are going to be uncollectible. Because if, I might have a business model where I, where I collect a lot of receivables, and I know that there's going to be a certain amount of them that are uncollectible, because there's just going to be some deadbeats that's part of the model, and then I will account for that by basically valuing my AR, estimating the amount of the AR that's going to be uncollectible so as not to misrepresent my assets as being too high when I know I have a lot of accounts receivable that I predict will be uncollectible even though I don't know who exactly I'm not going to be collecting from. Smaller companies and the easier thing to do would be to, to use a direct write-off method which would mean I'm not going to write off the the accounts receivable until I determine that particular accounts receivable account per customer that's not going to pay me. So right now we're using like a direct write-off method and I'm going to go over here and say let's add bad debt. I'm going to put a column over here before the utilities by selecting AG the entire column so that when I right click and insert it will apply items to the left of it. So insert there it is boom beautiful. So this is going to be bad debt expense let's just say expense so that's going to be uh here so bad debt expense is going to be negative two thousand so now notice what happened same impact on net income as we did before it's going to be reversing uh the 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 amount that we put to the income but like we did up here but this time it's not going to go to the income account it's going to go to the expense account so income is still going up but now the expense is also going up in the expense direction bringing net income down so it'll end up canceling out just like we did before to net income but gross income will still be there and then the net income will go down the other method we'll take a look at is sales returns here which is kind of which we'll talk about later so let's do this first Let's put the zeros across the board. Zeros across the board. Da, 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 da. Zeros. Zeros. Zero. 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 And this will we have to zero it out of the sub ledger. So B is also a deadbeat. So we're gonna say, dude, dude. This is ridiculous. So we have the two hundred plus the sum of these two and that brings it back down and then we'll bring the balance so it's going to be the balance is going to be the sum equals the sum of these two copying that across copy it across to paste the formula paste the formula paste the formula and then i'm gonna get rid of the underline and okay okay so now let's copy this down so now we see it reverses here just like we saw before and we'll copy this down nothing happened there and it reverses over here same thing from the equity standpoint but it's it's impact and the expense instead of the instead of the income all right let's put an underline under that one and i'm going to freeze the panes up top so i'm going to scroll all the way up put my cursor in a4 freeze the panes by going to the review or the view tab windows and then freeze panes boom so the header stays there as i scroll down that's super cool not just cool super cool Although not cold, because I don't like being cold, which is cool. All right, let's go to the five five, and then now we're gonna let's let's do another one. This time we're sale of 
inventory on account. So now we're selling inventory. We have to deal with the inventory. Let's say we sold it for 2,500 and the units, units sold, let's say are 200 units. And then the cost per unit uh, is $10. We'll say cost per unit, $10. And let's say we have to deal with sales tax, which is a usage tax, which again in the United States is a state tax as opposed to an incomes tax, which is the federal tax. But in other countries, the usage tax is might be the, the, the normal tax of, of the location. Remembering that, that uh, the double entry accounting system is universal. I'll make that 5% but taxes are not the taxes are the the stick that are in the spokes of the accounting system that you have to deal with uh depending on the location okay so 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 we're gonna have to say then cash let's say cash or accounts receivable is going to go up not just by the 2500 that's what we charged plus what we're going to have to collect for the sales or usage tax plus 2500 times the five percent the other side is going to be going to revenue or sales once again but the only only part that's going to revenue is our part not including the sales tax because in theory that is going to the government so we're just being the collection person on their behalf doing our doing our duty so we're going to say this is the sales tax it's going to be equal to the uh 2500 times the 5% would be nice as I do my duty if they would do theirs and stop people from shoplifting, help people to pay their bill for crying out loud. How am I supposed to stay in business this way? Anyway, let's copy this down. Collecting, they're collecting protection money and then not protecting me. It's ridiculous. I'd rather, I'd be better off paying the mob for crying out loud. Oh, anyway. So the assets equal the liabilities plus the equity. So we're good there, but we also have to deal with the inventory. So we're saying that the cost per unit was $10. So we have the accrual component of inventory we have to deal with. Let's add that. It's going to be, let's say, negative uh, 200 times 10. Inventory is going down by 2,000. Therefore, the net assets are the difference between these two which is of course the 625 and then on the uh liabilities side uh, i mean on the <laughs> on the income statement cost of goods sold is negative of the 2000 uh i'm sorry the 200 times the 10 so that means our net income went up by the difference between these two, which is $500 after consuming the inventory as an expense of cost of goods sold in order to help generate the revenue. And then over here, we had uh, on the inventory subledger, I'm going to imagine that we started with 20,000 in inventory. Let's, let me put this back on the books and the unit cost was 10 uh the the and then the total units was let's say uh total units was this over this and then so the total value is this times this so let's do that and then we're gonna say that we're down here now and where was i let's do this again i was over here on this line line 16 and so now we're going to say that we the cost is 10 still and uh we sold 200 units negative 200 i'll do it this way negative all the way over to this 200 and then so so that that means that uh the total units now i'm sorry my starting point should have been 30,000 there we go. So so then uh, we're going to say then our total our total units equals what was, we had before 3000 plus the negative 200. So now we're down to 2800 units and that gives us a cost uh, or or dollar amount in dollars of inventory 2800 units. We're going to assume they're all $10, $28,000 amount. 
So that's going to be what should be matching on our general ledger inventory account after we total this thing up. Let's put zeros across the board. Zero, 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 zero across the board. Okay. And so there we have that. And then we also have the sub ledger. And let's say this is client A again, or customer A, instead of having another one for C, I could add another one for C. Let's say we were stupid enough to make, to make another sale to A after they didn't pay us the first time. So it's gonna be the 2,500 plus the 2,500 times the 5%, or in other words, it's gonna equal that 2,625. So there's the 2,625. And so our total is this plus the sum of these two. All right, so there's our another sale. So this should match what's on, on the books after we sum this up. Let's sum this up, have the balance here, and then we will sum it up. So this equals the sum of this plus this, because this is the last transaction we had, last balance. And we'll copy that across the board, copy it across the board, paste the formulas, paste the formulas, paste the formulas, and then we'll put an underline under these, underline, or undo these underlines, get rid of those, put an underline under these ones. That's where the underline should go. Do it right. You need to do it right. You have the underline on the wrong spot. Okay. There we go. And then I can copy down the balance here. So then I'm going to say, all right, copy this down to do it and see if we're still in balance, which we should be. Okay. Let's put some underlines under these green zero means we're in balance. So that's good. I should have an underline there. So that's good. Okay. So there we have it. Now we'll do another credit memo. You mean A is not going to pay us? I told you not to make a sale to that guy again. He's He already didn't pay us last time for crying out loud. What? Oh my goodness. Whoever sold, whoever sold inventory to A customer again, it's fired. You're fired. We can't, we can't do business like this. What do you think? We're the government? It's ridiculous. Okay. L l that's okay. Let's just deal with what we got here. We're going to say, now we could just reverse the entire thing, right? So if I'm going to reverse this, the easiest way to think about a credit memo with inventory is to first think about the sales transaction. So you want to think about the sales transaction and then reverse everything exactly and then think about the twist that you would put in place. So in other words, I would just reverse it by saying accounts receivables going down, right? So I'm gonna reverse that. I'm gonna reverse the inventory, again, assuming that I'm getting the inventory back and I'm gonna to have to add it into inventory again. However, if the inventory is damaged or something, then I wouldn't add the inventory back, right? It would have just be a lost cause. It's already expensed and cost of goods sold. And then I'm going to go over to uh, the sales tax. I need to reverse that because I don't owe the sales tax at this point in time because we didn't make the sale. They're not going to pay us. But then when we get to the sales item, I don't want to reverse the sales directly, but rather instead of putting it into bad debt this time, I'm going to put it into what we often do, a contra sales account when we have inventory that we, say we sell called sales returns and allowances typically. Acts like an expense goes in the same direction as expenses, but is usually grouped in the income side of things. Basically, it's going to be a net sales side or gross net sales. So I'll put my cursor on the double A here, right click and uh, insert. And I'm just going to call it sales returns. Now you might call it sales returns, returns and allowances, but that's going to be too long. I don't want to have another row, so I'm just going to call it sales returns up there. And so that's going to be that. And then we'll say this is where I'm going to put the negative 4,500, allowing sales to remain 
I'm not going to have, because sales is only going to go one direction. Sales only goes up. And then when I have to reverse sales, I'm still going to leave sales alone, show it in another account, which is kind of like a Contra account because it's a sales account that goes the opposite direction. Contra accounts being generated or come about because we want to show more detail breaking out what would really be in this account into another account so that we can show the other half of, in essence, the T account, if it was debits and credits in another account. All right, let's put the zeros across the board. Zeros across the board. Do, 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 do. And so there we have it. And boom, boom. And then we have to take it out of the sub ledger. We have to take it out of the sub ledger. If anybody sells anything to A again, I swear, man, like, oh my goodness. This is gonna be negative, or let's just say it equals that. Okay. And then this is gonna be equal to the prior balance plus the sum of these two. So sub ledger back down to zero. And then the inventory sub ledger is going to also be impacted because now we got the units back on the books. So now we're going to say the units, uh, the cost per unit is the same. And we basically, it's now we've increased by 200 units again. And so that's going to be uh, uh, equal to total units are at 2,800 plus 200. Again, assuming we can put those units back in inventory. And then we have this equals uh, the 28 plus the 3,000, or I'm sorry, this equals the 3,000 units times $10 per unit, which brings us back up to where we started at the 30,000 uh, units, right? Okay, now hold on. I put the 30,000 on here two times. I shouldn't have, this should be, oh my goodness. Let me remove, the, this one shouldn't be here because I had it up here already. And then, and then this one, should be uh 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 the total is now going to be th this times this total units should be not here but up here sorry about that and that should bring us back so everything else looks proper so we're back up to thirty thousand. that's the bottom line Okay. All right. Uh, let's put some underlines across this. Underlines. Uh, if we could. I'm going to wrap this up. Running long. You're running too long, man. You're pulling too much time. You're breaking your own rules, man. Okay. We're almost done. I just have a... I just need to... I need to get to the vault. Not the vault. All right, I don't know. That's a, I have a movie in my mind. Copy these down. Am I in balance? It's not in balance. K paso. So we have the receivables. Uh, what happened here? What in the world happened? It's because I, sh I picked up the wrong amount here. So this needs to be negative of this, not the balance. This needs to be the negative of the 2000. There we go. And then the sales item here needs to be the negative of the 2500, not the balance. So I was picking up the balance. Okay, so that makes sense. Does that put me in balance? It does not. So did I do the same thing for the sales tax? The sales tax should be negative of this. Okay, and then I'm missing the inventory, I think. So the inventory I did not put in place, which should be negative of this. All right, that should do it, man. Sorry about that. That was a mess, but that's what the double entry accounting system helps us do there. So now we're back in balance. All right, so then I'm going to put the balance down here. Da -da, and we'll sum this. We'll, we'll sum this up now. Let's do this. The sum equals the sum of these two. And we'll copy that and paste it across the board. 
formulas, pasting formulas, and then pasting uh, formulas. Okay, I think we have it now. So the accounts receivables back down to zero. Subledger here's at 30,000. That subledger should match the 30,000 here. Accounts receivables down to zero matching the subledger. Now let's see if we're in balance with the total. Copy this down. Du -du. Copy this down. Du -du. Copy this down. Du -du. And underlines. And we're back to where we started. 50,000 and 50,000. Because we made all these sales to deadbeats. One of them being the same deadbeat. And we had to then do credit memos to all of them. Alright, any case. Let's do one more thing here uh, related to a credit memo. And this would be a... Uh, a sale so let's say on 115 let's say we made a sale at cash register and that's going to be a sales receipt so this time let's imagine we already got paid so let's say we got 800 800 dollars at a cash register going to record this quickly 800 dollars goes up sales is going to be the other side of it so sales is the other side but boom and let's put zeros across the board. Do, 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 do. Zeros across the board. And then we'll do the underlines. Underlines through here. Choo -choo. Underline and underline and underline. Okay. And then we'll copy this down, see if we're in balance on the transaction. We should be 800 change to assets, no liability change, equity, 800 change, balance. Then if I sum this up, equals the SUM of these two, copy it, paste it across, formulas only, formulas only formulas only okay no sub ledgers we have to deal with because there's no inventory or accounts receivable now let's say that something happened and they want their money back again so <laughs> here we go again we can't make a sale these customers <laughs> my goodness another one claims to sue us this is not good maybe it's us maybe it's <laughs> maybe we're the problem maybe our stuff isn't good i don't know i'm starting to question our the quality of our work at this point let's put some underlines under here and say uh so now we're gonna have to refund it so if we refund it notice this is a little different because we're actually going to have to give them a payment back or possibly like a credit or something that that could be applied to a future purchase or something like that so that means that we're going to actually have to decrease cash right so cash is going to have to go down and then the other side is gonna is gonna go to uh it could go uh, to sales let's just say it's gonna go to sales returns and allowances we have the same issue on the other side meaning should we reverse sales or go to sales returns and allowances i just want to point this out because it's the same idea as a credit memo but if there's no ar and you have to issue them a check it's not really a credit memo most accounting software will use possibly another term because you're going to have to issue them a payment because you've already received the cash, right? And so, but the other side would be the same. Uh, if there's inventory, it would be the same. I'll just put it to sales returns and allowances instead of hitting the uh, income account. And so there we have uh, that. So uh, there we have that. Okay, so let's put the zeros across the board. Zeros across the board. Almost there. This is a long one. I should have broken it out into two presentations. I had it broken out into two, but then I was like, then I was like, no, I can do it in one. And I probably uh, should not have put some underlines under that. But, you know, it is what it is. And it's long. That's what it is. That's okay. And so let's copy this down. So we should have 800. Uh, goes back down here. Nothing happened to those liabilities. At least we don't have any liabilities. Dang clients don't pay us, but at least we don't have any 
liabilities yet, so that's good. Let's sum this up. Let's look at the bright side of things. If we could for a second, we'll copy that across. Copy this across, paste in the formulas. Paste in the formulas. Paste in the formulas. Okay. And then there we have it. Let's add a balance. Uh, summing it up equal, well, wait, I'm just going to copy it down. Copy it down, should sum it up. And we're back in the balance. So once again, again, we're right where we started again after all this time. I, I'm in business to make money, people. We need to get better clients, man. We need to find some customers that aren't deadbeats. Let's do better. We need to do better next time. So we'll be back. We'll try again later.